Oh boy, another UFO over. Historically, a lot of Democrats, they turn to the guys at Saturday Night Live. They write all their material. You know J.D. Vance is watching this like, oh my God. Your material was real funny. Who wrote it? Well, I've had a lot of people helping. A lot of people, a couple of people from Fox, actually. I shouldn't say that, but they wrote some jokes. Jesse Waters has some great rape jokes. It was awesome. I feel like we need to abduct another comedian this week to break down all these zingers. Leap, fire up the alienator. Get Akila Hughes on this shit. Alienating. Akila, you're here. You're an alien. Let's get into it. This is great for me, honestly. I'm hoping to get a tentacle porn deal. And IVF, you had mentioned before All IVF. Right, I love this fall motif he's sat in. <laughs> is he like at a Kohl's getting his portrait taken? Olin Mills, yes. yes. I would bet all of the money I have that if they asked Donald Trump what that is behind him, like what hay is, he wouldn't know <laughs> the word for it. These fuzzy cubes? I believe that's what this is about. Oh, I want to talk about IVF. And that's him totally hitting on that woman. You come here often? I'd like to be her if. <laughs> Grab you by the eggs. I'm the do father, you don't I'm hear the father that of I, I'm the father of IVF, so I want to hear this question. I'm the deadbeat dad of IVF. <laughs> it's like a weird episode of Maury. You are the father of IVF. <laughs> what is your stance on that? So I got a call from Katie Britt, a young just a fantastically attractive person from Oh her. my god. She's a real babe. I'm not being sexist. I'd say the same thing about John Cornyn. And I said, explain IVF very IVF very quickly. <laughs> explain it to me like I'm not the father of IVF. And within about two minutes I understood it. Oh I said, my no, god. It took two insane. minutes? That's a ten second conversation. So it's not the penis? The vagina it has how many holes? How many IVFs can you have? All right. Well actually both candidates sat down with Fox this week. People are exhausted with someone who professes to be a leader who spends full time demeaning. If People are case, tired of that. If that's the case, why is half the country supporting him? Because they're idiots, Brett. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Why do half of kids eat Tide Pods? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the 50%? Are they stupid? What are yes. <laughs> God, I would have ripped off all my clothes and ran around naked if Kamala Harris was just like, yeah, they are. Damn, that felt so good to say. That was a given, I thought, Brett. I'm just trying to understand my fan base here. <laughs> like, I know you got to reach all the voters everywhere, but you're walking into a trap. Democrats just don't understand how bad Fox is. They're not there to have a good faith conversation. It's like, even if she did everything right, they're going to cut together clips of her laugh to be like, she's annoying, right? Yes! Yeah. You hate her. It's like, so then who cares? What is it for? <laughs> this is why she shouldn't go on Joe Rogan. I disagree. Why? She should go on Joe Rogan because he's so dumb and stoic, right? Yeah. <laughs> that you can convince him of anything if you sit down with him for 10 minutes. I do feel like if she went on Joe Rogan, smoked a cigar and said nothing, she would go up like 15 points. That's true. <laughs> if she eats one edible with him and they just keep nodding at each other, like most I of the time. Just talk about your favorite family guy quote or whatever. Hey, can you tell me about your Glock? Let's shoot a Tesla together. All right, whatever. <laughs> All right, you, you convince me. The vice President debuted uh, a new accent that we hadn't previously heard from her on the campaign trail, one that might best be described as a kind of Bob Marley intonation. Have you no empathy, man? Wait, what? <laughs> that is Bob Marley? She clearly said man, not mom. They are really desperate. <laughs> Might best be described by me, a white person with no culture, as a Bob Marley <laughs> intonation. All right, well, J.D. Vance also has something new on the campaign trail. Did Donald Trump lose in 2020? <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Before I answer, I have to let 19,000 people boo. <laughs> this is how my process works. Hold for booze. I've answered this question directly a million times. I lie about this every day. I've answered directly, indirectly, many times. I think there are serious problems in 2020. So did Donald Trump lose the election? Not by the words that I would use. He won alternatively. How did he thread the needle of still being an election denier, but not being confident about yeah. it? He couldn't even <laughs> lie the way that Trump is like, it was rigged. They stole it from us. Just say the words you would use. Right. Yeah, that's the question we're asking. I really couldn't care less if you agree or disagree with me on this issue. It's not and an you're, issue. You're, it's a thing that happened. What the media will do, they'll focus on the court cases. They'll focus, focus on, on evidence. evidence. They'll try to pin you down to one reality. And Vance isn't the only Trump surrogate having trouble defending him. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics, and I think it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, the National Guard. It's my belief that what... Uh, former President Trump is talking about are the people that are coming over the border. I say belief because that's not reliant on fact. It's my faith. The Trump Bible says I can believe whatever I want. Donald Trump saying I that he wants to use the National Guard in the military to go after 
the left. That's what he's saying. I, I don't. Be, I, I don't believe that's what he's saying. This but doesn't listen, apply to any know. other part of people's lives. I can't be like, okay, so the bill came out to five dollars at the grocery store. And I'm like, well, if you just balance it and tell the other side where it's free and I can walk out of here, <laughs> they're gonna be like, just give me the fucking money. Sorry, I don't believe that. I know you're reading the receipt, but I don't believe it. <laughs> all right, and now to the weirdest town hall of all time. An interesting situation there with. Two people apparently passing out. I'm told it's not that hot in this building. Are they doing a segment just to discredit the people who fainted? Yes. Like, it's not even that hot. They were Kamala plants. Is there any possibility that the new protest now is fake? medical emergencies. For years they had poor diet, and for years they did an exercise. They were playing the long game on this yeah. one. Man ate nothing but Chick-fil-A for breakfast for 19 <laughs> years. These leftist disruptors. I don't want to say that that's what happened here. But I'm gonna say that's what happened. <laughs> Prove me wrong, Democrats. The difference between Newsmax and Fox, or whatever the fuck channel this is. Real America's Voice? Real America's <laughs> Voice, sorry. No disrespect to the Ravis out there, but this is not the way you do a conspiracy theory. You can't sprinkle out all the bad stuff. You have to have some filter. Instead of standing up and screaming and yelling and holding up a sign. <laughs> that woman passed out on the side. She looks like it. Let her go. Let her cross into the next plane. And of course, maybe five, six minutes later, another one would happen. Stop the show. Can someone see if these fainters are wearing a Mrs. Doubtfire-esque mask <laughs> and they're really healthy young Americans underneath? Can someone just, just try to peel their face off? I would love for them to cut to somebody laying on the ground with like one eye open. <laughs> and for anyone out there who has ever done church choir or school choir, they always tell you do not lock your knees. <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, what? Engage the glutes. Trump supporters are just those fainting goats <laughs> falling over because <laughs> their knees are locked. And that's why Trump's always standing at those strange angles. So for any of you out there who plan on going to a Trump event, do not lock your knees. <laughs> Whatever you do. If you're going to a Trump rally, remember to dislocate your kneecaps. <laughs> also, we have many... Azerasians. Those blue you know, Asians. That's my yeah, Azerasian. I love my blue Asians. Those characters from Avatar. I ran out of races to be racist again, so I'm going to make up some <laughs> new ones. <laughs> All right, and now Trump's favorite new demographic. Black men are walking away from the Democrat Party. It's really fun to watch, actually, Barack Obama get all bent out of shape. You know, Jesse Jackson said he talks down to black people. Oh, yeah. As a black, I'm just, I mean, I don't know what color my alien is. <laughs> I have to say, uh, Jesse Jackson, that's not the one that he should have pulled out. I yeah. think we all know that Jesse Jackson is always cool enough. Out. He's like, don't riot, black people. You know, you want to riot. You just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. It's like a bad football coach of a bad football team at what? some college somewhere. In a bad metaphor. <laughs> it's a great way to show your racism to be like, first thing I'm going to think of is black people, sports, football, got it. And also, why are they a bad team? I thought you just said you were happy they were going to Trump. <laughs> He's like a bad person talking to bad people. Exactly. It's just all I see is badness. What could it be about them? What could it be? <laughs> Anybody you are talking to in a barbershop? Uh, guessing where black men hang out these days. <laughs> Wait, barbershop? F actually, famously, yes. yeah. I feel like he's not guessing. I feel like you're guessing, and you're guessing wrong. As a white news anchor. Yeah. Yes, Greg Kelly's new show, Black Hangout Hunters. <laughs> At a Trump rally? <laughs> yeah, the only black friends Greg Kelly has are those guys who have the Blacks for Trump shirts who are white. I actually read his crummy books. I read all of them, and I hate him. All about him. All navel gazing, self obsessed. Yeah, it's an and, autobiography. Uh, it's an autobiography. <laughs> I only like autobiographies when the person writes about someone else. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. He's four chapters in. He's like, it's still about it. I don't like this main character. I thought this was going to be about Eleanor Roosevelt. I was just going to say, <laughs> have you guys read Barack Obama's autobiography about Eleanor Roosevelt? <laughs> Want to understand how black males are going to vote? You go to the place where they talk politics. So we went to a barbershop. Interesting. <laughs> so now we're all in agreement. Obama was right about one thing, okay? <laughs> we usually go to whites only diners, but we're switching it up. Such a great idea because that's where all the talk happens. It's all the talk. And for women, it's in the, in the the salon. Maybe I, I can go to a salon with you. Yeah. I don't think they're going to let him in. <laughs> How do you feel about men's locker rooms? We get a lot done in there. I'm bringing it back to locker room talk. He's like, and I like to be where men are naked. This is so Fox News to be like, we're having a borderline racist conversation. How can we also make it offensive toward women? The problem is the camera. We can't bring the camera exactly. in there, Brian. That's why you take the camera and you hide it. It's a <laughs> hidden camera. We put it in the toilet. Cut 
a little hole in the gym bag so the lens pokes out. These days, cameras can be so small. Have you seen the Truman Show? And you know, I've been going across the country to these barber shops. You said you wanted to go. You guys are the same as me. It's the same stuff. We were born the same way. We were born the same way with extreme generational wealth. I had a great father. I had a father who was a great guy. <laughs> he would have hated you. Yeah. He would have hated all of you. Yeah. If my father could see me now talking to guys he tried to prohibit from living in his apartment buildings, I don't think he'd be too happy. All right, and finally, Laura Shut Up and Dribble Ingram brought on another professional athlete to tell women to shut up and make babies. Harrison, uh, you know, so many people on TikTok, uh, you know, young women, they were just recoiled from your comments. I'm definitely saddened that they took it in a poor manner. It's I was their fault, really. It's always women's fault. Being the, the homemaker, being the one that raises the children, and it's a beautiful role, but it's not a role that should be diminished. We shouldn't be diminishing that I just kick a ball once yeah. even twice a game. When the team can't get results, and most of the time I miss it. But to be clear, if there's a game where people just kick a ball, that's gay. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I know maybe it's countercultural to speak those values. Yeah, the real counterculture is women having children and raising them. That's so fucking punk. I was able to experience my wife now that we have three children. I experienced my wife. <laughs> Such a like Mark Zuckerberg way of talking. Are you properly experiencing your wife? How beautiful it is for women to maybe just step aside and prioritize their family. How beautiful it is when you just pop a Heisman to a lady and tell her to get the fuck out of my face. Like they always talk about women eventually joining the NFL. And if they did, they would be kickers. So I'm like, oh, he's threatened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And raise their, their family. And that's what I was just trying to speak love. Paramedics arrive to pump Josh Holly with <laughs> CC. Yeah. Seriously, what is going on? He is locking his knees. They're like, breathe, Josh. Come on. It's not even that hot in there. Four CCs of Pavarotti. <laughs> Action was taken, strong action. Ashley Babbitt was killed. Nobody was killed. Uh, there were no guns down there. We didn't have guns. Thank you so much, Akilah. Of course. Do you want to promote anything or is there anything oh my you want to? Oh my gosh. Everybody, listen to Rebel Spirit. It is my new podcast from iHeartRadio about me going back to my hometown in Kentucky and trying to get them to change my racist mascot at my high school <laughs> from a Confederate general awesome. named Mr. Rebel to a biscuit. <laughs> Go biscuits. Go biscuits. Yes. Love it. So please listen to Rebel Spirit. You'll enjoy it. Hey, Humies. Thanks for tuning in. If you like the show, Show, help us invade your planet by subscribing to our YouTube channel or drop us a comment. We really love those. If you really like the show, subscribe to our Patreon where we share some bonus content. All right. Okay. Gotta go. Bye.